Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Steve here. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button to help me out. All right, today we're going to be doing a first impressions as well as some of my thoughts on the top five things that you should do when you receive your monitor. And this monitor is the Dell G3223Q. You may have seen the unboxing video that I did a little while ago, and due to some questions from the viewers, I decided to make a follow-up video to talk about some of the things about this monitor. Okay, so we're gonna get right into it. Top five things that I think you should do. First is you should update the firmware. Now, my firmware when I got it was the M3T301 model, and I updated it to M3T303. Now, if you wanna know what firmware model yours is running at, you simply click the back of the monitor to bring up the monitor screen menu. You toggle down to Others, which is the last one here, and you can see here the firmware is M3T103. Now, what's important about this firmware is that, at least from my perspective or from a user perspective, is that you're able to turn off the blue LED on the back. For some reason, uh, you weren't able to do that before, and now you can, so that's great. So how do you update the firmware? So first of all, you would go to the Dell website, dell.ca in my case, you would go to support and go to drivers and downloads, enter your model name right here. Now, in the screen, you see that there are three different options. There's the Dell Display Manager application, the Dell G3223Q monitor firmware update, and the Dell G3223Q monitor driver. Eventually, we're going to install all of them. Now, the firmware is the one that you want. So download the firmware and click the installation file and let that do its job. A couple of things to note. Firmware updating can be dangerous sometimes. Um, most likely is that you want to make sure that the plug is plugged in, cables are all tight, and in addition, you need to have the USB uplink port connected to your computer, which is one of the cables that comes with this monitor. The second thing that you want to make sure is that uh, when you're updating the firmware, uh, you don't turn off the monitor or cut off the power supply. All right, so you would double click on the installation file and it will auto install and then put uh, the newest firmware on your, on your desktop, on your uh, monitor. One thing to note is that firmware updating can be dangerous if you mess it up. For instance, if the power went out, it can ruin the monitor. However, updating the monitor is really quick, it's really easy, and you should do it if you have that chance. Now, um, once you've done that, the brings us to our second point, number two. So number two is you want to update the monitor driver as well as install the manager application. So those are the two other files that you see here, uh, the Dell G32 monitor driver. When you plug this monitor into Windows, it will auto detect it and it will install some generic drivers. You do want the updated drivers specifically from Dell. So go ahead, download that one, and then download the display manager. You might wonder, what is the display manager? Well, it is a software version of the in, uh, of the in menu screen on the monitor itself. So with the Dell display manager, it allows you to bring it up. And here you can control the, uh, the contrast, the brightness, the input source, uh, and you can do a number of things on the screen rather than clicking the buttons on the back, which is really cumbersome actually. So this is actually a good program that you should have running on your computer, all right? Now, the, second th the third thing that you want to set up on your monitor is your frequency, your scaling, uh, and your resolution. So of course, this is a 32 inch monitor and it's 4K and it runs at 144 Hertz. You want the best out of this monitor, of course, so let me show you how to do that. So right click on your screen and go to display settings. Here you see I have two screens to set up, one in portrait and one in, in the, um, the horizontal mode, landscape mode. So we're going to click on the monitor, this one here, which is number two for, my, for me. And what you're going to do is set the scale to 125. If you set it to 100%, or, which is the default, it's actually going to be a little bit difficult to see on the eyes. The icons are very small, the font's very small. I would recommend 125%. Of course, you can go higher up if you want. Make sure your resolution 
is 4K. So 3840 times 2160, okay? Uh, if it's not, then definitely install that monitor driver to get it up there. Finally, you want to go to the advanced display and also make sure that you are running at the 10-bit color and also you have the uh, Visa Display HDR 600. So once you've installed the monitor drivers, you should have all those set and your monitor is good to go. Finally, the frequency here, you have an option to select it. I would select 144, which is the optimal for this monitor. Uh, that gives it that silky smooth experience while you're running Windows. All right, now on to the fourth thing that you should do. And the fourth thing that you should do here is to set the monitor so that it is bright enough so that it matches your other monitors or at least it's comfortable in reading. Uh, this is really simple to do. Um, if you've already installed the monitor manager, just open that up. And right here you can expand it, go to brightness and contrast. I set it to 80 and that's all there is that you need to do. I find that 80 provides a really good comfort uh, brightness uh, and it also matches up with the 27-inch uh, monitor that I have here. Um, you do notice actually that if I have a, uh, a page open and I bring it over in terms of color calibration they are not entirely the same. There is a little bit uh, more blue actually on the 4k monitor and I mean for me it's okay I don't really do any color intensive work but if you're a professional, then I would recommend that you do use a color tool to calibrate that monitor or multiple monitors so you get perfect colors. Uh, in my case, you'll be, uh, I mean, in, in any case, you'll be happy to know that out of the box, uh, the color calibration is pretty good and I don't think that you need to do too much about it. I may be wrong, some people may have other thoughts on that. Let me know and leave a comment below. Finally, the fifth thing that I would recommend that you do is to get your frequencies and your resolutions all set up if you're using a uh, dual monitor setup like I have here. So again, this one is a Dell 2721DGF uh, monitor. It runs at 165 hertz and, 100, uh, and, a, uh, and also 2K resolution, which is uh, 1440p. This one here is a 4K resolution running at 144 hertz. So how do you get them all up? So, when you connect it, you can connect an HDMI cable to one of them and a DisplayPort cable to another one from your video card or from your integrated graphics. Now, what I the problem that I noticed was that when I connected it, the portrait monitor was stuck at 60 hertz frequency. And that doesn't give you that silky motion that a lot of people like. And I wasn't able to fix that up to 144. So I looked around the web and a lot of people actually had this problem with other monitors and other setups. So the way I fixed it actually was if you right click it and you go to your display settings, you have this setup here where you have one monitor and two monitors. Uh, make sure first of all, this monitor is set up to have 4K and also the um, 144 Hertz. That's great. Now go back to the other monitor and go down here to click to advanced display and make sure everything first of all is the correct resolution the correct color bit depth, which is 10 bits in this case here. Uh, this one uses a display HDR 400 and I've already installed the driver monitor for that one. So everything's good. But if you notice right here, it says, uh, it says 165 Hertz because I fixed it. But when I had the problem, it was stuck at 60 and there's no way, absolutely no way to change it. I updated drivers, updated firmware and nothing would work. I even checked the cables, that didn't work either. I finally found it right here, display adapter properties for display one. You click on that, it brings up a kind of an old fashioned window that you see here. Click on the second tab and you will see here that there's a screen refresh rate. And from here, you can actually fix it to the higher, res a higher frequency. And in this case, I was able to turn it from 60 to 165 uh, Hertz. And there, that way it gave me the silky smooth frequency here. If you want to match them up, you can also do that and set them both to 144 hertz and that will be fine as well. Okay, so that's the top five things that I would do the moment I get this monitor, get it all set up and you'll be happy with it and you don't really need to change it that much more. Okay, so now we want to talk about some of the contrast 
uh, uh, between the two monitors and you know just the monitor itself. So I wasn't really sure how to find a standardized kind of way of testing blacks on this monitor. Um, there's really um, uh, not a full standard way that I uh, that I found. So I actually went on a website and I downloaded the um, picture test, which is from I think it was called the uh, Lego M test or something like that. So this one displays um, 20 different shades of black with a white box at the end to calibrate to show what a white looks like. And I will bring it to full screen for you. And I'll also bring my other monitor to full screen. Now, both of them are not color calibrated by any means. And I'm gonna turn off the light. And I know that you, know, you should do this in a very dark room, but you can see from the two images that there, the boxes here, about number five, that's this one here, is still quite clearly visible. And then four, three, two, and one become a little bit harder to discern. If you actually look at the, the other monitor, it's actually quite a bit better. I can actually see five is right here, four, three, two, and probably one is a bit difficult to see, but that shows you the color contrast on the uh, Dell 27 inch actually is quite nicer than the 4K monitor um, in that sense. But you know, colors are overall very vibrant. The blacks are very nice, even though this is an IPS panel. Now IPS, as you know, there is um, the contrast is not as nice compared to VA panels or even OLED, of course. But for the price of what you get and the color quality, um, I think that it's, uh, it's still very acceptable. Next up, we'll be talking about the picture in picture and the picture by picture. I'm gonna show you a demonstration how to do it and I'm gonna use my Sony PlayStation to do that. All right, so uh, first of all, what is picture in picture and picture by picture? It basically means that you have your computer on with your input into your screen, what you see here, but you also plug in a secondary input, could be from a computer, could be from a console like the PS4, and you will have a picture on the screen uh, either picture in picture, which is a small screen here or here, or picture by picture, which means that it is cut through the middle and you have a bigger kind of a portion. You can split half of it, you can split 30 and 70, however you like. And then you can have two inputs going at the same time. The only caveat is that you cannot get the audio coming through both. You have to choose which audio system you want. Now, normally I have my speakers plugged into the back of my computer and that outputs whatever is coming out of the PC. But for this purpose here, I unplugged it and I plugged it into the audio jack at the bottom of the monitor so that whatever uh, signal is coming through in the cable, whether it's HDMI or DisplayPort, it will have a audio signal going through and I can select which port I want. So if I want the PlayStation, I could select that. Or if I want a PC sound, I could select that. So let's kind of be set up picture in picture. First of all, uh, what we're going to do is click on the back. And as I mentioned, you don't need to use that thing. So I'm not going to use it this time. I am going to be using the on-screen version. You expand it and click on the uh, input source. And there's a picture in picture and a picture by picture option. We're going to click that right here and you have an option. Right now it's off and therefore you only see my PC. Uh, let's do picture in picture first. So I click that and it's going to do a couple of calibration. Um, it's probably easier if you have one monitor, but I have two here. Um, just give it a couple of seconds. The signal is gone. So I'm going to turn that off. Okay, well, it's kind of a preview to what I was gonna say about what I don't like about the monitor. Anyways, so we have our display here, okay? And this is the secondary input, which is black here. I haven't turned on my PlayStation yet, so let's turn it on. And there we go. So you can see the logo there, it's booting up the PlayStation 4. If you want, you can open up YouTube and you can, you can even select a walkthrough for some game that you want to watch. 
In any case, I have the PlayStation here. And if you notice, there's actually no sound coming from the PlayStation. It's all still coming from here. So what you would do, well, let's click on this one here, which is Horizon Forbidden. So the sound is coming from there. What we're going to do is, the only way to change the audio is actually through this, unfortunately. They didn't set the option to change it in the software. You will click on Picture in Picture, and you will select the audio. Instead of changing it, you will change it from Main. You will set it to Sub. And now, if you hear it, this is the PlayStation music. I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna turn on a game, so how about we turn on uh, it doesn't really matter. Maybe this one here. There we go. So this is Final Fight, which is really an old game, but you know, it's a nice arcade smash em up kind of game. Okay, so you can see here that's how picture in picture works. If you wanted to switch to picture by picture, you would click on you would click on the screen here again and you will switch it to picture by picture. I'm gonna select the 50-50%. Okay, it's gonna do a bit of toggling again, and you should get a half window this time. There we go. Okay, so that's how picture by picture works. And, and then you can start playing and you can use the walkthrough on the other side. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna quit that and I am going to turn off the picture by picture now. That's pretty much the demonstration for picture in picture, picture by picture. So that brings us to the last point, which is um, some of the things I don't like about the monitor. And you've already witnessed it the first time when I was trying to get the picture by picture working. But occasionally, when the monitor goes to sleep or when you're switching inputs, it has a bit of trouble finding the signal. And as you saw, the only way to fix it was to turn off the monitor and turn it back on. I have no idea why that happens. Uh, I know that in Windows itself, there was a deep sleep option that you can turn off. Um, but for some reason, I turned it off and it didn't work. The mo these monitors used to have also a deep sleep option in their built-in menu and you could turn it off. But even with the newest firmware, they removed that option uh, and I was not able to do it. So that's kind of unfortunate, but um, that's mainly the, the, the major uh, downside of the monitor, which I found, and I believe the software can fix that completely. Um, other than that, uh, my, my initial impression is that it's a beautiful monitor for the price, and also the colors and the real estate of the screen estate that you get is awesome, uh, it's second to none. And I think that these are one of the best monitors that you can get for gaming and for regular use. Um, just before all those OLEDs come out. And of course with OLEDs, you can have burn-in, which can be a problem. These ones have a little bit less of a burn-in effect and I haven't noticed that at all with regular use. Um, and yeah, so I think that if you're thinking of getting this monitor or you already have this monitor, uh, follow those five steps that I've discussed about and also um, let me know what some of your thoughts are on this monitor. All right, take care and stay safe.